Hello everyone, my name is Jeffrey Kennedy and welcome. I'm often asked as editor of Commodity Junctures and Traders Classroom, how can I become more proficient at using the Elliott Wave Principle? Well, in addition to suggesting that you know the rules and the guidelines of the Wave Principle, the final piece of advice is to keep it simple. And that's the point of today's lesson. I want to walk you through some price charts where I'm going to make things simple because whenever you're working with wave structure, I find that the simplest wave count more often than not is the correct wave count. So we're looking at this diagram that I've drawn here and we have an ABC down for W and ABC for wave X. So we've identified the larger structure as a complex correction, specifically a double zigzag. So following this initial drop in wave A, what we can look for moving forward is for an advance and then another round of decline. But notice the lead interpretation. I'm starting off on the foot, which identifies the larger structure as a complex correction. Again, if we look at this diagram, how could we make it simple? Well, let me offer a suggestion. Why don't we start off with just a simple ABC decline, look for an ABC up for a new price move, and then this move down since we've identified it as an impulsive structure. Why don't we just simply identify it as wave C of a running flat? I think this interpretation is easier and much more simple than working with the complex correction. Also too, whenever you're working with a complex correction, which is specifically a double zigzag, I find that X waves tend to end at or near the extreme of wave B of the initial wave W decline. So in this instance here, I really don't see the need to go, to go there. I don't see the need to utilize or incorporate a complex correction when a simple running flat identification clearly works. Okay, now let me show you this idea of keeping it simple real time. Now I'm currently looking at a price move in the cocoa market where you are able to identify the rally up from the December low as an expanding leading diagonal. Now I think this is a viable interpretation and I think that's supported by the impulsiveness of the sell-off that we've since experienced in what I believe to be wave two. The sum structure works, the rules and guidelines are adhered to, but remember, an expanding leading diagonal is a very rare pattern. I sometimes call it a unicorn pattern because it, even though it does occur, it is rare. Typically you might see sometimes a leading diagonal in a wave one position or a wave A position, but an expanding leading diagonal, again, we can identify it this way, but I don't think that we need to utilize or incorporate in our structure or in our counting such an exotic formation. If we take a look at, say, the London cocoa market, I think we can come up with a wave count which is quite simple. Off the high here, ABC down for A, WXY up for B. Basically, I'm, I'm tracing out a flat formation. This idea is bolstered by, again, looking at the New York cocoa market and simply identifying the larger structure as an expanded flat, specifically or most likely a running flat because at present I don't expect the wave C decline to terminate below the wave A extreme of 2355. So yes, we can call price action, recent price action in the cocoa market uh, uh, an expanding leading diagonal, again, which is a very rare formation, but I don't think we really need to because, again, I find that keeping things simple more often than not is keeping things right. Thank you very much and until next time.